You are on to a life transforming experience as Pastor Prince Abbott brings you God's word with deep insight and power. God bless you. The next one, a pastor must understand sonship principles and be an ardent doer of the principles. So a pastor must know what it means to be a son. If you are a pastor and you are not yet a son, then you are not yet qualified for inheritance. The biggest headache of every church are converts or new members or newcomers who have refused to become members. Members who have refused to become disciples. Then pastors, disciples or pastors who have refused to become sons. Sonship is the highest, highest level. Sonship is the highest level of ministry. It's the highest level. So if you are a pastor, you don't have a father-son relationship with me, then you are playing around. It, it's not pastoring that is the highest office. It's sonship that is the highest position. It's not pastoring. It can be a pastor, not a son. He tell you something, you do whatever you want. And, okay. A pastor must know the basic tenets of the Christian faith and practice them. There was no basic things that the Christian faith talks about. What are the basic tenets of Christian faith? Holiness, righteousness, faith, purity, giving, love, service. These are basic tenets. And a lot of them. Okay. See this one now. Number 14, is that right? A pastor must be baptized by mansion and filled with the Holy Ghost. So, you are not baptized. Put up your hands. Let me see. You are not yet baptized. Good. You are not qualified yet for the job. So now, we declare baptism for you this season. Emergency baptism, if there's anything like that. You have to go through that process. You are not baptized once again. Let me see your hands. Can you see? That's bet infant baptism. It's no baptism at all. We're just sprinkling water on you. Don't know. What kind of baptism? Is that how they baptize Jesus? Sprinkled water on him. That's not baptism. Nobody should deceive you. Baptism has to be by a mansion. You have to be submerged. Have you been baptized that way? Submerged into the water and brought up. That's the real baptism. So if you had done infant baptism, that's not it. You need to get this one. That's the one they did you by. They sprinkled water on you. That's not baptism. They sprinkled water on you. Okay, so if you've not been baptized, remind me. We'll do that immediately. If you, if you miss that aspect of your life, something will be missing. Can't be. Okay, number 15. A pastor must love his church. You must love his church. If you don't love this church, you won't make sacrifices for it. 16. A pastor must know the vision and mission of his church. I don't need to preach this one again. 17. A pastor must have a sacrificial heart for his pastor as his father, his church, and the people he is called to shepherd. 18. A pastor must know the content of the constitution operational strategies and policies of his ministry and live by them daily. So you don't yet have a copy of a ministry operational manual. You should request for one. Request for one. We can give you few, I can give you few, you know, basic things you need to know from the manual. If not all, a few things that should help you know, like the vision, our mission, our core values. A statement of faith. Our, our strategies, all of all that. What makes us a ministry? You should have them spelled out. 19. A pastor must be a faithful financial steward. That means he must not be stingy. If you're stingy as a pastor, please don't be here. You won't prosper if you're stingy. He must not be stingy in his giving. He must be a tighter. Are you hearing what I'm saying? Everybody listen to me. Any service, especially Sunday service, tithes are called for and pastors as their congregation. That day you cease to be a pastor. Let it be on record. Because I don't know what you are pastoring without tithing. You are a robber, you are not a pastor. 
week in, day in, day out, you don't get income, then you are a failure. Every income must be tightened. Or must be tight. That's why you have, some people have financial carryovers in their life. You don't tie it as a pastor. You are attributing it to, I don't have a source of income. Income comes into your hand. You generate income. People give you money. Well, if people still give you money, like that's your money, or you make your living by what people are giving to you, then you are joking. Because it, somewhere along this stage, I'm going to show you that the pastor must have sources of income. Don't you have a source of income? Okay, don't you have? Then why some of you don't pay tithes? It's not to my benefit. It's to your detriment you do that. If you don't pay, it's your detriment. It's not to my own detriment. These are covenant principles. I know a few people, okay, pastor, he doesn't play with something like that. And God is blessing that lady. I know this one doesn't play with it. Does not play with it. And a few others, I thought I've been watching her and she's been consistent. There are a few others who don't do it and you think God will be pleased with you. You are going to destroy your finance, my friend. Ten naira enters your hand. Go and look for one naira coins. 100 naira. That says a careless 100 naira. You are going to finish your next year if you don't start doing this thing. Every son, every money that enters, find God's money. He's one tenth. Separate it. If you're not a tight, that things will be tight for you in life. So there's nothing go- you're going through now that is one mistake. It's a product of two things. An error in commission or an omission. A sin of commission or a sin of omission took place somewhere. You can't tight 100 naira. You won't tight 1 million. Trust me. You won't tight 1 million. As a ministry, we're obligated to pay in tight. We're obligated to pay in first fruits. From next year, we are setting all these financial systems and principles, putting all these things in place. We can't tamper with one naira of ministry tight. We can't. A pastor that... Do you know there are things that can happen to you because of tithing? Okay, there are other interpretations. Hmm. We'll talk, the three of us, the three of you, we'll talk later. I'll show you some of the things that cause some of the things that happen to you guys just to happen. I'll show you guys. Because I don't take it normal. That things happen to a Christian like that. And I just come and give testimony. Uh, thank God, do nothing happen. Praise God. The problem will repeat again. You can't touch a man who is a tither. Can't touch, he can't die in accidents. A pastor died in this town. He's still in the mortuary. I went with one reverend to investigate some of the factors that led to his death. And my God, you'll be so shocked. I learned a million and one things that day. One of it I learned. Any church that is going to have unprecedented prosperity, as a ministry, they can't play with their tithes. Finance officials, take notes. Ministry... We can't play with our ministry tithes. Whether the church is here or the church is anywhere, you can't touch the ministry tithes. All the incomes must be tithes. You must tithe them. Unless you're going to die one kind of one time. These are sacred laws. It's not something you can play with and escape. These are sacred laws. I found out just for tampering with finance alone, Ananias and Safari died. That is still happens. They died. That one man just died and we're checking, investigating for a whole day. I went out of my house six o'clock that morning, went to the state PFN chairman's house with a man. The man was in my own house, Revenue Song. He's a spiritual father to the guy who died. Very prominent guy in town. I know him, grooving well. But all kinds of things happened. Went to PFN's chairman's house. We were there for more than three hours. My ear was shoot. Once the man, the man would turn to me and say, son, are you hearing this? I said, sir, I am writing it in my heart, not just hearing it. My plan was taking him to that place. After I take him there, I now delegate the car to another person. I, I had you in mind to call. Remember I told you that night, see me tomorrow morning. My plan was if you are free so I can give you the car or give you another car to use and go and to take him around because he was going to go there, go to other four different places, go see the family of the man, see the wife of the man, see the church of the man. When I finish hearing those things I hear, I say I'm not delegating again. I forgot everything I had to do. I followed the man everywhere. We went to see the wife at Presco. From Presco, we went to the church at uh, Ojo. That was the place you came to meet me. 
We went there. We were there for another four hours hearing things. You need to see Jesus bears in church. It's a lesson for another day. And a prominent, promising future was strangled out. Some of you are playing. Keep playing. Pastor is telling you, don't do. You are doing. Carry on. People are entering things you don't understand and they are carrying the consequences. Continue. Your father tells you, don't. You keep doing. Enjoy. Be going. He's covering this from your life. You are vulnerable. Come and sit down in the meeting and you are looking at him. You think he's covering this on your life. He's gone. Whatever happens to you is on your, is on your head. He's on your own head. The young man died a shameful death. Why? Because he didn't set boundaries. He didn't set laws and boundaries in the ministry. So things happened and I can't mention them here. I can't mention them. A man is a seed sower. You are a tighter. You don't play with your offerings. You don't play with your first fruits. Nothing, anything happens to you. You call me. I don't need to. When Dokas died, it was what this woman had done. They brought back to God. That brought her to life. When a man dies in this church, and I just come, not that a man will die. You. I'm just giving an illustration. That a man that you call me and say somebody dies. The first thing I check your record of type. Are you a tither? Are you a sea sower? Do you take offerings serious? Do you have a service unit in church? My God. And you are dead. You can't die. You come back to life. Go ahead and read Malachi very well. You understand that titan principle. And pastors are playing with it. And you think divorce won't devour you and devour your finances and kill you. Everything happening to you can be explained. Nothing is a surprise. I don't know what is going on. I can't explain it. I can explain it. I can explain it. I can explain everything happening to me. I can explain everything. There's nothing under the sun without an explanation. Everything has an explanation. It's called the law of cause and effect. Nothing is neutral in life. Nothing. Nothing is neutral in nature. There's a law called the law of cause and effect. Whatever you put into it is what you get back. So you don't play with that. You don't want to have carryovers next year. Go and set blueprints starting from this minute as a pastor because this is what you're going to teach your church members if you pastor to have a healthy church, a prosperous church. I don't think it's just a preaching and laying of hands here that prospers you. It is principle that prospers. Principle is what prospers people. Write the laws in your heart. Write the laws. Is that your mother? Okay. Write the laws in your heart. Write the laws in your heart. These laws. Internalize it in your heart. Why do you think they were giving people sack letters? Just few years back. You think a special prayer that I prayed on her life. No. It's principles. Principles. Others have lost their job. She has taken over other people's job. Principles is what kept her back there. It's not because of whatever principles. Think God can look at all her labor of love in his vineyard, all the principles she's obeying, all the tight principles she's obeying, all the sacrifices she's... And you think God can look at that and ignore it? No, he doesn't do a thing like that. He's not, he will be unjust. Some, so, <laughs> Pastor Law was saying something one time. He said he, he came from Inugu. He went to see what date the, the deacon uh, his excellency belt for Christ ambassador there. When he went there, he looked at it. He said, with all these things these people are saying about this man, God will still be unjust not to give him the seat. I want to say it again. He said, with all the bad things people say about him, with all the bad names people call him, with all the bad things they say he has done, with this thing he has done, God will be an unjust God not to give him. The voice of the people is not the voice of God. The people are saying, you are bad, you are bad. With all those things they say, with what that man saw, he said, God, Truly, you would have been unjust not to give that man this seat with that thing he's doing there. Call him whatever you want. Principles are respecters of nobody. Respecters of nobody. If you like, cry from now to tomorrow. It's not fair. He's the baddest man I know or the worst man I know. Why did he win the governorship? Why wasn't it this one? Can't these people who have been fighting him have been dying like fowls? So that was where going to Inugu to Ghana appeal. Appeal what? They died like fowls on the road. So you can't fight a man who, who
who, who, who understands spiritual principle. The year ends. He's come back with Thanksgiving. He gives 20, 30 million naira Thanksgiving. He gives 10 cows, 20 cows. You say he's in a cult. Well, I don't know how many cult guys give like that. Yes. He's an Oboni man. No? He's in cult. That, that. I don't know how many Oboni men give the kind of thing the man gives. He can be an Oboni. I'm not, well, even if it's nobody, I'm not sure he gives nobody the way he gives to God. So which altar will be higher? I'm not saying that you can carry the holy things of God and mix with satanic things. Anyways, that's what I'm saying. But I'm telling you that principle speaks. Principle speaks. So he must be faithful with his tithe. He must be faithful with sowing seeds. He must give his offerings. He must give his first fruits. Next year is starting now. People will be giving their first fruits. Hope there's no problem, my dear. Everything is well. Okay. They'll be giving their first fruits. They'll be giving... Okay, now. A foolish man would wait until next year. He just enters. Boom. He doesn't understand prophet's honor. There's a mumusious man. Because you see that year needs to be arrested. I sent my pastor a text yesterday. He sent me a reply. See me last weekend of January in Lagos. I said, I wish I could make it earlier. However, thank God it's still January. Why? Because I need to sow into the year. And as I'm going to him, I'm going with special request. And my heart desires, all of them must be granted. The heart of the king is in God's hand. One of them. So I'm already making plans and preparation. I'll fly to Lagos, stay for one week or so with him, sow my seed, receive instructions from him for the year. And when I come back, I'll be operating from another dimension. You think you've seen the best in 2015. Wait until 2016. You'll be shocked. 2016 is my year of almost no crisis. No crisis. Not even almost. No crisis. It's going to be a year of ups and ups. Steady progressions. Just ups and ups. Can't have one issue. There's a way to secure the year. It's a year, a way to secure. You secure, you secure your finance. You secure your family, your marriage. You secure your business. You secure your career. So he understands Prophet Hono. There yeah, are people who are passionate about partnership, charity. It is okay. Number 20, a pastor must have sources of income. Can you see that now? Businesses, investments, ETC. You don't have one. Go and create one. You can't be preaching to people and they are driving and you are trekking. That's not the pastoring of the end time. Pastors should have the best cars. Pastors' offerings should be the best in church. You see, this one they normally think before that pastors are church rats. It's no longer now. The pastors trek or they enter Okada and their members are coming with jeeps and all that. There is pastor. And they starve the man of all the good things. Why the people you pastor should be able to give to you and bless you as you get there. Because you're going to have churches. If they don't sow to you, that church can't prosper. But you see, the first thing is that you have to learn these things. You have to do it. You don't do it, the people under you rebel. I went for a birthday party of one of the pastors in Dominion City at Oka. And I asked her a question. I said, does this birthday party look like Pastor David's party? Is it not one of his sons they are celebrating like this? And you see people gathered, cars packed everywhere. So they, why? Because that man has learned how to. The way it works is this. When you submit under authority and honor authority, other things under you begins to submit to you and honor you too. Everything under you submits under you and starts honoring you. 
That's the way it works. For instance, I want to flow in the supernatural where I can speak a word and I can speak it with assurance within the next or so minutes or hours. This thing will be recovered. Without fear or doubt, I know it has already been done. What do I need to do? I have a father over my life. Honor him. Are you hearing what I'm saying? You honor the man. You become a lion like him. You make the crease. The thing happen. You sow into him. You see something in that man you covet. Hey, this man has a healing anointing. This man is a man. God truly honors his word. That a person can be lost since yesterday and just in one minute of speaking a word and issuing decrees. Something happens. What does he carry? Where does he get it from? True honor. It's not true teaching. You want to carry one dimension of me. You, you covet so much. What unlocks it? Come with the seed. Don't tie it to car. Tied to that thing you see in me. Hold on to it. Pastor, this is what I see in you. I treasure. I want it on my life. It drops. The way you carry that thing, you go out there, you're doing whatever you're, you're passing in a church. The same thing you are doing to me, every other person starts doing to you. Every other person starts doing to you. Every other person starts doing to you. When I gave Pastor a millionaire, as I getting seeds in millions, Like that. As I getting vehicles a million. Now remember what millions of naira. When I came back from that particular trip, all I had at the time, I could take that money and invest in something. I took it and invest in spiritual authority. What happened after a few days was a gift of a car that one million can't buy. You need multiple millions to buy it. One million couldn't buy. The thing just dropped. And so many other things like that. These are, these are things. With all the knowledge I had, I couldn't unlock this thing until I started understanding these things and doing them. Now, the moment you start doing that, everything under you submits to start doing the same thing. You start enjoying that same grace. But now, you need to understand, even at that, even at that, a pastor needs a source of income. We're not going to dwell on this today. During this January um, um, programs, we're going to be doing that focuses on the individual. It's titled Leverage and Goals. We're going to be dealing on um, finances, how to cut down on expenses, how to increase savings, how to invest, and many other things we're going to be looking at during that season. It's going to be awesome, awesome, awesome. It's going to be awesome all the way. Awesome all the way. Awesome all the way. So that you will know how to invest. Even as you are investing, the people you pastor should also be a blessing to you. But for instance, you're going to start a new work somewhere now. You don't expect the people immediately to start being a blessing. You need to be the one to be a blessing to them. For instance, something like buying a church keyboard. You are the one who should be able to crack that. Something like buying maybe the first sound system. You are the one who should, something like rocking the altar. You are the one, you should be able to crack that. You're waiting for the head church to give you. You're wasting your time. You can't prove your ministry that way. I don't know who gave Pastor Mike. I don't know who gave Pastor PCJ. Who gave Pastor Law. Who gave them. All of them have been able to prove their ministries. All the man needs to give you is impartation. Give you the Holy Ghost. Give you the watch. Give you the training. Take, I don't know who gave me to get, you know, I don't know where I went to collect loan or where, where I went to beg people for arms and collect them money to. All I needed was the word in my spirit. Impartation. The Holy Ghost. Then just go in that might. Then you see things are happening. So a pastor must have sources of income. Businesses, investment, no matter how small. Have a savings. Then tie your income to the covenant. You will see amazing things. You will see all kinds of channels opening up for you. Okay. A pastor must be able to rule over his family, married or married. I, I showed you that in the early part. That means a pastor cannot divorce. It can't be a divorcee. Not in this ministry. You can't put your wife away. You can't put your husband away. For any reason. You just can't can't happen here. You can't wake up and then Pastor God is showing me another woman to marry a second wife and send another one back. Cast out line demons from you. If you will refuse, I will send you to the grave. 
。OK。Twenty two. A pastor must be a listener. Pastor should be able to listen to people. Twenty three. A pastor must be approachable and friendly. How many of you see that in me? I'm approachable and friendly. Uh, you should be also. You should also be able to have that kind of nature. People should be able to approach you and talk with you. Like sometimes we finish service, some of you just carry your Bibles and dash out and go away. You can't approach people. People can't approach you. You're not a good pastor. You should be able to talk to people. You know why sometimes service finishes? At least for now, I still sit back. People can approach me. People should know this pastor who just finished preaching can be talked to one on one. If not, you won't build your church. You are doing down man of God. Your service finished. You carry protocol and jump away. That church won't go anywhere. So people, even when they don't come to you, because sometimes they can be afraid. Who knows? Hi, hey, now we just preach now. How can we talk to him? Go and talk to them. I do it a lot. I talk to, I see new people in church and I, I go to them. I, hello, how are you? How are you? And if you hate this man, so he can be talked to. So if you're going to pass to effectively, see the attributes I'm showing you now. These are the things. So we're closing. 24, a pastor must know basic ministry ethics. Ministry ethics, how to relate with the pastor. I rebuked pastor on one the other day. She was moderating the stage. She appreciated pastor. That's quite okay. Our pastor is in the house. Let's give pastor a big shout. Ooh, glory. Let's also give pastor Kingsley Bush. I looked at her. Who gave you that permission? You are not the one who invited pastor Kingsley. Your pastor is your father. You don't welcome visitors. It's fathers who introduce visitors. Children don't, sons don't introduce visitors. You see ministry ethics. I went somewhere, I finished preaching. The bishop of the church told me, he said, I am so shocked at your ministry ethics. I'm so shocked. When you come to the stage to preach, how do you start? Where do you start from? Do you just come because you have, God has prepared you with this anointed message that the people must hear and they have to cry in church today. They have to repent. Everybody is sinning. Everybody, you just come up. Shaka, yaka. Nicole, shake it. Yeah, yeah. Pastor, I'll just give you the mic. With me to the book of, you are confused. The angels for that ministration will just lift. You will struggle on that. You, you pick past, you pick God. I want to thank God for this opportunity to minister today. If not for him, I would not be here. Then I want to thank God for my pastor, my father. You don't just say, pick one or two things pastor has done in your life that people can see, that you can see. Amplify it. What happens is that the source just opens. The man's heart, that's where the thing flows from. You think it's just what you read or what you studied that will be flowing. No. It is the connection between you and the man. You, what you do at that point is you connect to the heart of the man and inspiration starts flowing from where he's sitting. Even if he's not there, wherever he is, the thing just unlocks. And it's flowing. You just let's appreciate Pastor and the people are appreciating him. Let's thank him. Let's give God praise for our anointing, our shepherd, the beauty of our you know, the man's heart opens. That's a man who has head. Then the pastor is married. You pick his wife and mommy. Stop having hope. <laughs> Amen. <laughs> Hallelujah. Then you pick her, even if the sister you've always known in church. From the day she's, well, I think I should leave this chapter. You pick the woman, mommy, so so and so. You appreciate her the same way you appreciate pastor, because two of them have become one. Of. She's co-host. She's co-senior pastor with me. The same thing applies every other places where we have pastors. The same thing. For instance, now, a pastor under, maybe Pastor Abraham, now he's pastoring a church and he's married, pastoring a mega church. A pastor under him cannot come to his platform. Because one of the characteristics of churches or of a church is that a church must be self-governed, self-propagating, must be self-sustaining. 
So now, there is what you call chain of command. Even if that church is hooked up to the central church, but that church has an angel. Maybe the senior pastor and the father of prison use worldwide, but I'm not the senior pastor of that church. I'm not the one in charge of that parish. Just like we have a governor in Ebony State, but we have a president all over Nigeria. You don't break boundaries. So the man comes. That's why sometimes you need to be very, very careful with observing some things. The man comes on the stage. He wants to appreciate. He wants to preach. Maybe just give him a stage. He doesn't go straight into, I want to thank God. I want to thank our father in the Lord, Pastor Prince Abba. They found that and you are a confused man. Nobody gives you that right to jump there. Can't do that. You thank God. Then you thank the pastor. Yeah. Let us thank our pastor. You don't call him our father. He's not your father. There's only one father, one mother in the ministry. Then you have sons. You have children. So he's a son. But you don't call him our son. He's your pastor. Our mentor. Our, you can call him your coach. You can call him your life coach, yes. But you see all those things will happen to you here until you go and find your parishes on. Somebody can come here now to preach and us appreciate our pastor, our life coach. Pastor, that person would receive panabitin. Because as long as this place is concerned, I'm the one overseeing here. Except I leave this place now and go to Pioneer another church and pick somebody and put him in my office. I say, this one now is the senior pastor of this church. Uh, hey, that's when I cease to be the one in charge here. Then that person takes that honor. But to carry that honor in your life, you need to go and pioneer your parish. Then as the ministry grows and builds and builds, we get to a level where we have a, a CEC team. We now have bodies of, you know, an international leadership cadre. Then somebody's coming up to the stage. He appreciates senior pastor. Appreciates the mommy of the ministry. Then he appreciates the senior pastors. Maybe the people in the Central Executive Council. He appreciates other pastors. And he kicks off. When that has happened, you, you have, can, can't you see military? Can't come to military. And you are coming to do anything without saluting officers. You salute the ones who are put in charge of, you know. That's the same way it is in the kingdom. For the continuation of this message, please play the next track.